How y'all doing? Bell Becker again, and today we're gonna learn how to interact with Mongo with Go. Oh yeah. This is pretty straightforward uh, because Mongo provides their own drivers for connecting with Mongo and Go. Pretty nice. Also for interacting with the binary JSON format called BSON, uh, you'll notice that um, at the top here, I already have a couple of imports, and um, in order to do this, you know, you're going to have to have your project go module initialized and run go git and get uh, mongo go.mongodb.org uh, slash mongo driver slash bson and then same thing but mongo. And then the mongo has a sub package called options that we use to do things like uh, set the URI on the client that we're going to connect with. So the first thing we got, and I also have my, uh, I'm just, I have a MongoDB instance running on my computer in the Docker container. So it's just connecting to the local version. Uh, so to get started, we need to set up a client. And to do that, we're going to do client error equals mongo.newclient. And it's expecting, um, I think it's called client options or something like that. Uh, to basically get what you want, we're going to do options.client. And then the way they do this is they do it like, um, what is that called? A builder pattern where you can, all of these, this like client option struct has methods on it that will apply changes to the struct. And every, each one of those methods like returns the struct. So you can kind of chain these methods to build it. And the only one we're going to do is the one called apply URI. And I'm going to pass in my Mongo URI. Just like that, and we're gonna do if error does not equal nil, you know, typical go things. I'm just gonna do log dot fatal on the error. And uh, the Mongo driver stuff is context aware, so we're gonna have to make ourselves a context to pass around the context dot background because I don't care about timeouts and stuff. And we're gonna do error equals client dot connect to connect to our Mongo instance and do this same same song and dance here. Okay, at this point, assuming there are no errors, we should be connected to our Mongo instance. Okay, and uh, assuming no errors are thrown at this point, I'm going to do a defer on client dot disconnect, passing in the context. Uh, just to make sure that when we're done, our connection is properly cleaned up. So at this point, you should be connected and can interact with your, with, with your Mongo instance. The first thing we, we wanted to do is grab a handle to what database we want to use. I have created one on my local instance. This is called demo that I'm going to use for this. I'm going to call it, say, demo db equals client.database. Oops, database. I can't spell it. And demo is the name of the database. And I'm going to create a collection that I'm going to be using for this uh, this little tutorial. I'm going to do error equals demo db dot create collection. Create collection is what you use to as is as create the collection on your in your database. First option is the context because all these are context aware, and then the second option is the name of the collection. We're going to do cats because I got a couple cats, so we're going to use cats. Uh, do your error handling down here and uh, assuming there's no errors I'm, I'm going to do a defer again on um wait not yet yeah i'm getting ahead of myself uh so we've created our collection now we want to grab a handle to it so we're going to do cats collection equals demo db dot collection cats meow and now we're going to do our defer on cats collection dot drop passing in our context what drop is going to do is when it's when basically when this code is done it's going to drop that collection out of the database the reason why i'm doing this is because we're going to be inserting data into this database so we can read it back out and i don't want the data to be duplicated every single time so we're just going to drop the collection every time so it just gets remade uh so at this point we have our connection we have our database chosen we have our collection created so let's let's try inserting some data into it now. And I'm gonna do uh, we just use a method on the cats collection called uh, we're gonna insert one 
piece of data first. So we're going to do this method called insert one. Uh, if you would go look through the API for this package, you'll notice that most of the functionality is basically a mirror of what you can actually do just like within the actual like Mongo instance, like in a command line. And we'll do result error equals cats collection dot insert one. First option is the context as usual. And then we're going to define an instance of bson.d, which I think is um, basically like a, a bson document, basically. And each one of these is going to have uh, two values here. It's the key. So like the, in, in, since this is like binary JSON, the key is like the, 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 key, the, the actual key value in the JSON pair. And I'm gonna say name and the value is in the name of the cat. So I'm gonna say our fuzzy little shithead name, Mocha. And we're gonna have one more key pair here, which is breed. And the value for this is Turkish bond. Oops, that's not how it's spelled. It's like that. So uh, at this point, we should have one piece of data in here, okay? And I'm gonna do our usual error collection, or user, usual error checking, holy crap, I can't talk. And to start off, let's just print this out, okay? Print uh, result, just to see what we get. So at this point, we should be able to run this now, and you will see we didn't get any errors, so we did successfully, successfully connect to it and do everything that we were doing. Um, and you'll see that the result returned back this um, this object ID. This was the ID assigned to the BSON document that we inserted in our insert one call here. So we successfully inserted one document. Uh, let's insert more than one, uh, which is fairly straightforward. It's just we, we're going to use a different method called insert many. So we're going to do many result error equals cats collection oops, cats collection dot insert many passing in our context and we're just going to pass in a, a slice of doesn't really matter what the type is and we're going to go here and we're going to have two of them in here you know, just, just keep it simple bson dot d and this one's going to have key name this is very similar actually you know what i could do is just copy these down here yeah and i'll just get rid of this put this oops here i'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this then i'm gonna change these values uh we're gonna put latte this is the other cat she's a little shithead uh she is a main coon and then this one uh, I'm gonna do another old cat of ours uh, that I had a long time ago, Trouble. And he was just a domestic short hair. So we have, oops, I called that insert many with a small m. There. Then we gotta do our error checking like we always do. The assuming we have no error, um, we want to check, we want to print out that result. So we FMT print line result. And result. Oops, not result. Uh, mini result. Wrong name. Mini result. Okay, so let's run this again. You'll notice that this one has two values returned, and they're both object IDs. So these are the, the IDs of the two uh, documents that we inserted. All right, so we can insert one and many values into our collection. Let's read some of that data back out, shall we? So let's just let's just grab all of them first, okay? So I'm gonna do cursor error equals cat's collection. And we're just gonna use a method to find here called find. Find takes two arguments. It takes the context, and the second one is a uh BSON map, I think is what it is, uh of for a filter. But if you basically don't want to filter anything, we can just pass in basically a, an empty one like this. And what this is basically saying is, is grab me every single uh, document in that collection because it's not being filtered at all. Um, we're going to yank and do our usual error checking. And assuming that that is not uh, bort, 
there's two different ways we can interact with a uh, cursor like this when we have multiple results. And I'm going to show you that in two different ways. So the first one is uh, if you just want to basically just grab everything all in one go, if your data set's not very big. Uh, so we're going to define a variable to dump it all into. I'm just going to call it cats. And it's a slice of bson.m. And we're going to do if error, or my notes that, uh, if error equals cursor dot all context, and then a pointer to our slice variable that we made. Uh, error is not nil, and we do log dot fatal. And what that's basically saying is take this cursor go iterate through the entire result set and unmarshal all of that into our variable here. Uh, this is fine to do if you don't have a lot of data, but if, if you literally have, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of documents in your collection, this is probably not a smart thing to do. And I'll show you the other way to do this. That's more appropriate when you uh, have a large amount of data to iterate over. Uh, so let's just print that out through fmt print nine cats cats. So let's run this. So theoretically, when we print this, we should have three values in it, right? So we have cats, and we have a slice, and we have these bson maps. Object ID three Turkish Vaughn Mocha. The second one, uh, Maine Coon Latte, and the third one, Domestic Short Hair Trouble. Yep. So they're all in there, or they will be all in there when we run this. So what is the other way to do this that doesn't involve like just consuming every single document that's in the collection? Well, we are going to do basically the same uh, thing. I'm going to yoink this because it's, again, going to be extremely similar. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'm going to yoink this. And I'm going to paste it down here, uh, except... So when you do all, all will actually close the cursor when it's done, meaning like it tells Mongo, okay, I'm done with this result set. You can free up the memory now. We are going to do a more manual approach. And when you do the manual approach, you need to actually say, okay, close this result set. I'm done. So we're going to do defer cursor.close, passing in our context. And what we're going to do is you can iterate over the cursor yourself with a for loop. We're going to do for cursor dot next. So basically, as long as dot next on the cursor actually returns another document, it will keep iterating over it. So we're going to declare a variable to uh, dump our data into. And I'm going to say kitty bson .m if error equals cursor dot and it has another method called decode you pass in a pointer to your variable and that's just going to do is take the um the data in that in that wherever that cursor is currently pointing at and unmarshal it into your variable uh, if error does not equal nil uh, log dot fatal oops, fatal error and then we're just going to print out the data about that cat kitty kitty just like that and that is doing as complaining because neither one of those is being initialized okay so let's run this and this should look similar except it's not going to be all in one go it should be yeah you see it's in three separate lines now but we have the same data but we're we're kind of like manually iterating over it ourselves so the last two things i'm going to show you is to pull only one out of there which we're going to do this with, uh, I'm going to declare a, another variable, just called cat, bson.m. And I'm going to do if error equals cat's collection find one. First argument is context, and then again, no filter. So we'll pass that in. And then instead of having to do an error check right here, we can immediately call decode. Instead of having to handle this separately, as, or like in multiple lines like, like like we did up above and i'm going to unmarshal into our cat assuming there was a result and if error does not equal nil uh, log dot fatal error and then we're just going to print the data about our cat uh, cat right yeah. cat cat Oops. so we're going to run this so this should just pull since there's no filter 
it should just pull the very first one, which should be, yep, it's, uh, it's Mocha, that little shithead over here. Uh, so, uh, now, okay, we've pulled one, so now let's, uh, run a quick, run one on all of them, but we're gonna use a filter this time to only get a certain one. So, I'm going to create a filter, and it's just a, a type of Bison M, and we're gonna say breed, and let's look for uh, Mocha. So I'm, I look for Turkish Vaughn. And so to use this, as I pointed out, the second argument to that to those methods like find and find one is a filter. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna say F cursor, F like filtered cursor, error equals cats collection dot find context filter. If error does not equal nil, log.fatal, you know the drill at this point. And now we're going to do the same thing we did above using all. Uh, but this time when we do this, we expect to only get one value back, which is the only document matching our filter. So I'm going to say uh, var bonds for Turkish bonds is a slice of bson.m. If error equals f cursor dot all context bonds error does not oops error does not equal nil log dot fatal then finally we're going to print out our result nine Turkish bonds bonds so this should be the last one if we run this we should get only one result yep uh, here is our uh, the result of our filtered find query, and you will see it only has one result like we expected. Uh, so that's it. That's all I wanted to show you today. Uh, this package is capable of way more than this. Uh, it's like it's capable of pretty much anything that Mongo itself is generally capable of. Um, you, I, I think you can even do the whole thing where you like watch for changes and get like live updates. Uh, but that's like that's almost an entirely different video in of itself. Uh, with this, you should be able to at least, uh, with Go, do very basic things that you'd want to do in Mongo, which is just connect to it, uh, uh, manage your collections, and insert and read data back out of those collections. That's, what I, that's all I got for y'all today. Y'all come on back now, and I'll see you next time.